bringing the people behind our food to life. Today we'll be making rutabaga carrot ginger soup, which is a wonderful soup for using a number of seasonal vegetables. We've got these beautiful orange carrots and yellow carrots. We're just going to take off the tops. You can give these to your backyard chickens or you can give them to rabbits. A lot of people ask me if you can cook with them and I know that some people do, but I find that the taste is really strong, green, um, kind of wild carrot flavor, so I don't, I don't tend to use them. So we're just going to give these carrots a peel. Keep in mind that the peeler goes both ways. The blades are sharp on both sides and you can go back and forth on that carrot and get them done really fast. Carrots come in purple and orange and even white and yellow. Actually, orange is one of the later developed colors of the carrots. Uh, a lot of the colors were developed by the Dutch. I like to use the orange and the yellow carrots for the soup because if I, if I use the purple ones, which are, are really lovely in flavor, they sometimes muddy up the color of the soup because they're a little dark. So now that we've got them peeled, we can take the scraps and either compost them or give them to your backyard animals as well. So we need about five cups of carrots. And we take off the ends. Carrots are really high in vitamin A and beta carotene. They're high in fiber. They're low in sodium. They're low in calories. And they're low glycemic, so they won't shoot your blood sugar level up. Really healthy, healthy vegetable. Carrots were originally used for their medicinal purposes rather than their culinary purposes until they developed them from a kind of strong, grassy tasting vegetable into something that was sweeter and crunchier. Keep in mind when you're chopping not to lift the blade above your fingers so that you don't cut yourself. Keep your fingers nice and curled. You can keep the tip of the knife on the cutting board if that's easier for you. You can do these in the food processor too. You don't have to cut them by hand. I love cutting the vegetables all by hand. It just feels good. But a food processor makes short work of this, especially if you're, if you're in a hurry to get your soup done. So our next vegetable we're going to cut up is the rutabaga. The recipe calls for one large rutabaga. This is the very beginning of the rutabaga season and we're in for a lot of them, but right now they're still a little bit on the small side. Uh, rutabagas, can get very, very large. I've seen them at the farmer's market literally as big as my head. Um, but so these were just getting started here, but these are going to be nice and sweet. Rutabagas in a lot of the world are called Swedes, and they're actually part of the underground stem of the vegetable. Not necessarily a root, but they are treated culinarily like a root. Then we're just going to cube up the rutabaga. And you don't have to make it fancy. It just needs to be about the same size as the carrots so that everything cooks evenly. Next we'll take the celery. And we need about a cup and a half of chopped celery. So I like to just cut off the ends. Now I do save these for, for broth. Don't be afraid to use the leaves, they're really good in soups. As long as you don't have some of the very top, tough outer leaves, those inner tender ones are just absolutely delicious. Okay, the next vegetable we'll chop up is the onion. Now, if at this point you're getting tired of chopping up your vegetables, keep in mind that this soup freezes beautifully. So you can make a big batch, put it away, and then pull it out on a busy weeknight and have a nice, refreshing, hearty soup. Those cold autumn rainy nights. I start with the, the root end away from me. The root end is going to keep the onion intact while I dice it. So then I'm cutting not quite all the way to that root end. I'm keeping my fingers curled under. Then if you want, you can lay your hand on the top to secure the onion and make a slice this way. And then 
So I'm cutting the onion a little bit smaller than some of the other vegetables, and that's because onion takes a little bit longer to cook. So we need about a cup of onion, which is about one medium onion. So next, potatoes, and about two medium potatoes. And we'll just give those a peel. and cut those up about the same size as the carrots and the rutabaga. Now the potato is going to add some body to the soup, a little bit of that starch is going to help thicken it. Garlic, so if you want to separate the cloves of the garlic, you can put your head of garlic down and just lean on it, kind of rock it back and forth, and then we can just take uh, two, two big cloves, and I like to separate the skin from the garlic with a little whack. Flat-sided knife, also a bowl works real well. You can just set a flat bottom bowl or a little plate on top, um, one that's real sturdy and, and give it a whack that way. Trim off the edges, those are hard. I don't want those in my soup. It's gonna be a nice smooth soup. And then if you want to really um, get things going with your, with your garlic chopping, you can give it another smash, and that's gonna almost chop it. And I don't even think we need to go any further than that because our garlic is going to um, be pureed in the end, the whole soup will be. We're ready to start cooking our soup. We're going to take some vegetable oil. I've chosen a very light olive oil. You can use coconut oil or your vegetable oil of choice. Now you want to Put about two tablespoons, enough to coat the bottom of the pot with a thin film. Go ahead and turn that on. And as soon as that's warm, we'll start putting in the vegetables. It doesn't matter what order you put these vegetables in, they're all going to go into the pot. So we'll do the onions. You should have a light sizzle like that when it hits the pan. And then the carrots, potatoes and rutabaga. And lastly, the celery. I'm gonna give it a little stir just to coat everything with the oil. So we're getting the vegetables nice and hot, uh, getting them to release their juices a little bit, and starting the soup making process. This will take about five minutes or so. And give it a stir every once in a while. Make sure that nothing's sticking or scorching on the bottom. If your vegetables begin to brown a little bit, you'll just want to reduce the heat. Next, we're going to add a little bit of salt, season our vegetables. And then we'll let that cook for another couple of minutes just to let that salt get in there, penetrate the vegetables. Now, I made a homemade vegetable broth. You can use store-bought, but I really don't know why you would because making homemade broth is so simple and so easy, particularly the vegetable broth. So we'll just add that in there. Now all you need to do to, to make the broth is to put up a bunch of cooked vegetables into a pot, bring it to a simmer, and simmer it until it's real flavorful and aromatic. And I used onion and carrot and celery, a little bit of some sweet pepper, bay leaves, thyme, peppercorns, garlic, and a little bit of fennel. So I didn't use all of the broth here because here's a little secret to soup making. Um, the less liquid that you cook the vegetables in, the more flavorful the soup will be. And that's because the flavor of the vegetable stays more concentrated and doesn't flood out into a large amount of liquid. Then later when you go to puree the soup or you're finishing the soup, you can thin it out a little bit more um, with more broth. But I like to just cover the vegetables. You want to make sure that they're all down there in the broth and not sticking too far above. While the soup is simmering, we can grate some ginger. And I got this beautiful, fresh ginger from the farmer's market. And if you find it, it really is a treasure because it's very thin skin, it's very flavorful, it's got a brighter flavor, a fresher flavor, a softer texture. Then we're going to take a chopstick and just get that skin off by rubbing a chopstick against the very thin skin of the ginger. That way, you're wasting very little of your fresh ginger. 
as the skin of the ginger ages or dries, it gets a little woodier. It goes from papery to a woodier skin, and that's why you need to use uh, maybe a another trick when ginger gets a little older is to take a spoon and scrape the skin off that way. And then when it's real hard on there, you can use a peeler. Then we'll, we're going to grate our ginger, and I like to use the microplane. And that will really break up the fibers because ginger does have a lot of fibers in there. You can also chop this up. We need about two tablespoons of fresh ginger. Now it's time to test the vegetables and make sure that they're ready. So we'll just lift that out and give them a poke with the knife. That looks great, ready to puree. And we're going to stir in the ginger and add some fresh black pepper. And stir that in and then we'll puree the soup. That's getting really thick, so we're going to add a little bit more broth and continue to puree it. I'm using an immersion blender, which is this little blender on a stick, but you can use a food mill or a, a regular blender or even a food processor for this. Now, if you find that you don't have enough broth to make the soup the consistency that you'd like, you can always add a little bit more or a little bit of water or even a little bit of cream if you want to make it more of a cream soup. So now we're ready to serve the soup. And this is going to make a lovely warm lunch along with a nice green salad, maybe a loaf of crusty bread. And there you have it. It's a farmer's market in the bowl. Yellow or orange? Orange. Okay, you take the orange carrot. The hope is that over the long term, children will have more exposures to foods that promote health and that are grown in more sustainable ways.